One of the coolest things about PC gaming is installing mods that change the way you game. Mods can do anything from swapping out character models, to adding completely new expansion sized areas to explore. So why not take advantage of this ability on the Steam Deck? After all, it is just a handheld gaming PC. Might as well take advantage of that PC part, you know? So let's take a look at the different ways you can mod games on the Steam Deck. This isn't going to be a full-blown tutorial on how to install mods for every game, since modding one game can be completely different than modding another. We're also not going to cover games that aren't available on Steam itself here. So no widescreen hacks for emulated games and no Minecraft mods. This will, however, cover some of the basics of modding to get you up and running. Before any of that, let's just go over backing up your game files in case the worst happens. You want to back up your game files in case modding a game goes wrong and corrupts some important data. Shortly after getting my Steam Deck, I was playing around with files I probably shouldn't have been, and uh, something bad happened to one of my games and I could no longer get it to launch. Even deleting and reinstalling the game didn't fix the problem. The issue was finally resolved when I swapped out my internal drive for a higher capacity one. And that's definitely not an ideal fix. And this is why backing up your files is super important, so that if you encounter a similar issue, you have a known working backup of your game. To do this, simply head into desktop mode on your Steam Deck. There's a super simple way for us to do this now, so just open up Steam. Find the game you're looking for in your library and right click it, which you can do with the left trackpad oddly enough. Select properties, then select local files. And finally, backup game files. You can then just select a location for the backup. If you don't have enough space, you can either manually backup only the important files that you know you're going to tamper with, or just plug in some external drive and save it onto there for now. And now that you've safely backed up your game files, we can get to modding. And if anything goes wrong with your game, and uninstalling your mods doesn't seem to fix any problems, you can simply overwrite the game with your known working backup and everything should be fine. The easiest way to start modding is to use the Steam Workshop. It's important to note that not every game has Steam Workshop support, but the mods you install will be synced to your account. Here you can see that I'm playing Left 4 Dead 2 with mods. I installed these mods on my main PC. And when I downloaded the game on the Steam Deck, all of my mods were installed as well. If you plan to change between your main PC and the Steam Deck, then this makes modding much more consistent, but also super easy. To see if a game has workshop support, you can select a game in Game Mode, navigate to Game Info, then scroll along this bar to see if you can find a tab labeled Workshop. If you don't see the Workshop tab, then the game probably doesn't have workshop support. From here, you can browse all the mods that this game has available through Steam Workshop. You should be able to sort by popularity or subscriptions or stuff. I haven't found a way to type in keywords to search for on game mode, so if you're looking for a specific mod, you may have to do that in desktop mode, where you should see a little search bar here. To install a mod, just select it with the A button, then scroll down and hit subscribe. It really is that easy. I'm not even making some meta joke telling you to subscribe. That's just the term they use. To uninstall a mod, you simply unsubscribe. There's no major commitment, so there's no reason to be afraid. On the mod page itself, you can see a description of the mod. Look at pictures or videos, add it to favorites, and even leave a comment. Adding mods to your favorites can help you keep track of them easily. And reading comments can sometimes give you more insight to other people's experience with that mod. For example, there's a very popular mod pack for Forager here. But reading the comments and looking at the description shows me that some aspects of the mod don't work too well with the controller. We can always just use the Steam Deck's trackpad or plug in a mouse and keyboard, but it's nice to have this information regardless. Some mods may have other requirements, and you'll have to install those first, so it's always important to read the mod's description before complaining that your mod doesn't work. Next, let's talk about in-game mod support. There's only a handful of games I know that have this kind of feature, so I'll name them out for you. We got a Skyrim Special Edition, the Farming Simulator games, at least the one I played on PlayStation did, and that was probably like Farming Simulator 14 or 15, and uh, Fallout 4. I tried looking up more games, but couldn't really find what I was looking for here. By in-game mod support, what I mean is that within the game itself, there is a mod menu that you can browse and install mods from, yeah, from just within the game itself. So take Skyrim, for example. Actually, let's clarify Skyrim for a second. There's two main versions of Skyrim available on Steam. You have the original version, and then you have Special Edition. The original version actually has workshop support, but the Special Edition doesn't. And the mods between the two kind of work differently because the games themselves are built a little different. So that might be important to keep in mind. Instead of workshop support, Special Edition has the Creation Club and its own mod menu. And here you can browse and install mods with the simple press of a button. You can even search 
search for mods here, though your selection is going to be somewhat limited. An important thing to keep track of here is your load order, and mods will usually say something in the description like place this at the very top of your load order, or place mod X below mod Y because mod Y is dependent on mod X or something like that. If there's no mention of where a mod should be placed within the load order, then just leave it in the middle-ish and you should be fine. Hey, this is a super simple and easy way to install mods without having to do anything too complex since this feature is built within the game itself. Now, like I said, there aren't too many games I know of that even have this feature, so if you happen to know of some more, then please leave a comment about it. If your game doesn't have Steam Workshop or in-game modding support, there are a few other places that we can grab mods from. By far the most popular seems to be Nexus Mods. I've been using Nexus Mods for years and I really love it. There's tons of mods for many great games, so take a look over there and see if they have a game you're looking for. They also have the kind of mods that aren't exactly allowed to be on Steam Workshop or anything since they may be a little too, uh, <clears throat> much, let's say. Uh, but even the Nexus has its limits, so if you're looking for that real dirty stuff, then you'll need to head elsewhere, you dog you. To download anything on Nexus Mods, you'll need to make an account first. It's free and easy to do, so just take care of that. After you've done so, simply feel free to browse all the mods to your heart's content. Once you find one you like, we can look into installing it. Before we get into that, I want to mention that there are many mod installers that can streamline the process of modding and keep all your mods organized. It, Nexus Mods has its own thing called Vortex, and then you have things like Mod Organizer 2 and stuff like that. For this video, I'm unfortunately not going to go into that stuff. Some of these mod organizers weren't exactly designed to work on Linux, so uh, getting those ones to work is a bit of a pain. You can use something like Lutris to help with this part, but that's something I'm still looking into myself. I haven't used Lutris before, and I'm trying to look into it during my free time here and there, but uh, you know, using mod organizers and stuff like that on the Steam Deck, I, I guess that's a future topic. If you have experience using stuff like Vortex on the Steam Deck, then please leave a comment about it with your experience, as I and many others would love to hear it. For now, I'm just going to show you how to install some mods manually. Each mod has its own installation and uninstallation instructions listed on its description tab on the Nexus, so take note of those. Witcher 3 is a pretty easy game to install mods for, so let's take a look at that. You need to locate your game files, and I already kind of showed you how to do that when we backed them up. I right click on a game, then select properties, then local files, and this time just hit browse. This will open up the Dolphin File Browser to the exact location of where your game is installed. If you then look near the top and click on the thing that says Common, it'll take you to where all your other games are installed, and I don't see all of my games here, since these are only the ones that I have installed on my internal drive. So if I repeat that process for a game that's installed on my microSD card, I can find all the games that I have over there. We'll probably also need a different file archiving tool. You have Arc to start with, but that won't work for certain file types, so just go to the Discover Store and search for pzip. Install that, and then just forget about it for now. Uh, let's take a look at the Fast Travel From Anywhere mod, and looking at the installation instructions, it says to extract the mod to our mods folder, which we have to create if we don't already have one. Uh, My Witcher 3 is in a different location since I have it installed through Heroic, uh, but use the process we went over earlier to locate your game folder, and then right click to select create new folder, which we will name mods. And to download the mod from the Nexus, you need an account, like I said, so log in, and then click on the tab that says files, and then we're just going to select manual download. After that, you're going to select slow download, since you probably don't have a premium account, and it should ask what you want to open the file with. So make sure that pzip is selected, since arc may not work. I've actually tested this exact mod with arc, and it wouldn't open, it wouldn't support the file, so you're going to have to use pzip for this one. And after that, just right click on the mod, and we can select extract, extract all, and then just change the output to something simple, like our downloads folder. You can then find the file in the downloads folder, and from there you can simply place it into the mods folder that we created. You can drag it, copy it, paste it, whatever you want really. And once we're in game, we just have to test things out. As you can see, we can do exactly as the mod says, just fast travel from anywhere. The mod description advises against doing this during quests as it has the potential to break the game, but otherwise it worked perfectly. Always pay attention to the mod description in case there's some other restrictions or requirements. So that was pretty simple, right? Why don't we take a look at another game then? We'll do Stardew Valley this time, and let's try NPC map locations. You'll notice that this time there's actually a requirement, and if we click on it, we can see what it is. Now things below are mods that require this mod, and we don't care about that, so what we care about is the thing at the top, 
which is SMAPI. Actually, I noticed this mod was right above the mod we're looking at now, but we'll just use the link provided by our mod page instead. And it takes us to a website to download SMAPI, which states that it works on Linux, so that's good for us. Download and extract it to somewhere simple, like our downloads folder for easy access. Now after you've extracted it, you might notice this uh, file inside called install on linux.sh, which should take care of everything for us, but I couldn't get it to work. If you do, then again, please comment on how you did it. Thankfully, the readme file has instructions on how to perform a manual installation, and it should be surprisingly simple. First, we click on internal, then Linux, and we should see install.dat. If you click on that, it should open in ARC. And now you just want to click extract and place it somewhere easy to access. I'm just going to use the downloads folder again because consistency. A file labeled install should be there now. And we just need to bring up our Stardew Valley game files the same way we've done before. You should now copy all the files from the install file we just got uh, into the Stardew Valley game folder, overriding any files that already exist. Now for the next step, it wants us to find a file named Stardew Valley depths.json. Uh, make a copy of it and then rename the copied file to stardew modding api.depths.json. Uh, make sure you have the correct file selected. I almost did the wrong one. We can click on the magnifying glass to search for the file we need, then make a copy of the file, back out of the search so you can paste it, and then rename the copy. Just make sure everything is spelled exactly. Don't leave any spaces that shouldn't be there or anything like that. Just spell it out exactly, case sensitive and everything. Now the next step is to locate and rename the Stardew Valley file to Stardew Valley dash original, then locate Stardew modding API and rename it to Stardew Valley. All of that was just to install a prerequisite mod. But now that we have SMAPI installed, we can now install the mod I originally wanted, NPC map locations. The install instructions are pretty simple and step one is already completed. If we click on files, there will be two files that show up this time. Just read them and they should tell you which one you want to grab. So in this case, it's going to be the top one. Manual download, then it's going to remind us we need SMAPI, which we already did. So hit download again and then slow download because we don't have premium. Then open it with pzip. Extract it to somewhere, of course. I'm just going to use downloads folder again because why not? And for the final step, it tells us just to place the files into the mods folder. So within the Stardew Valley game files, there should already be a folder named mods since we installed SMAPI and we just need to place our new mod in there. That's all there is to it. We can launch Stardew Valley like we normally would in game mode. And once we're in game, we can check our map. And yeah, all the NPC locations are clearly shown to us, which is really handy. I hate wasting half of my farming day looking for Shane or something trying to turn in a quest. So I love this mod. It's pretty much a must have. That's pretty much all there is to it. I'm no expert here. I just read instructions on what to do and followed them. I can't cover how to mod each and every single game out there, but I hope I've given you some basic knowledge to help with modding your games. Some mods will require much more work. Other mods simply won't function on the Steam Deck, but there are plenty that should work fine. Again, I haven't gotten any of the mod managers to work, but I haven't looked too deep into them yet. If you have any experience with them on the deck, please leave a comment about it, as I and many others would really love to know. Make sure you back up the game files for any game you intend to mod in case something goes wrong. And there is a somewhat high probability of something going wrong with each mod you install. Finally, if you enjoyed the video, then thanks again as always. I appreciate you and everything you do. Ciao.